Hello and welcome to a new video about electrochromatic electrohydraulic. Last time we talked really a lot of things about valves and so on, pa pa pa. We know now how such valves is working and how to select it. Now we want to, to realize how we make diagrams of the wanted logic. Okay, so we are talking about electrochromatic control schemes. We know pneumatic control schemes from previous videos. We know electric control screen schemes also from previous videos. And now, an electropneumatic control scheme is a combination of those two. Okay, so it stays. We have two parts. We have a pneumatic scheme. Yeah? So there's a pneumatic scheme. And the pneumatic scheme will look like a pneumatic scheme we are used to. At the top we have some working element. Yeah. Draw here a cylinder. Yeah. Maybe it's the cylinder MM1. Yeah. There is limit switch BG1. There is another limit switch BG2. Uh, nice cylinder. It is operated by a control element, which is below the cylinder. Yeah. This is a double acting cylinder, so I need a 5-2 way valve. Yeah. I will simply draw here directly the coils, even if it's pre-controlled usually. This has also a name, QM1 is the switching element. Here we are going to the cylinder, usually. Yeah, here we have the one connector. Two, four, three, five. Yeah. Control scheme. Yeah. This usually also have a name. Yeah. So this is MB2. And this is MB1. Yeah. The coils yeah, which are operating this. And then at the bottom I have somewhere uh, power supply part, so there might be compressor, bug, bumper, something like this, yeah. operated by motor, then I might have some pressure accumulator, something like this, yeah. bug. Chromatic scheme. Did this previous video, chromatic. Yeah. This is complete right now. I mean, usually Pneumatic schemes are looking like this, yeah, in electro-pneumatic control. Not too complicated. Maybe they are a little bit more complicated, especially if it comes to hydraulics, yeah, because then there is a lot of, of force and so on, and you need to be fail-safe, then maybe additional parameters, additional valves come in just for, for safety reasons. Yeah. Our, basically, it looks like this. And this is completed by the electric scheme. Yeah. There we said electric scheme. This consists of several different plans. And where the logic is inside, this is called the circuit diagram. Yeah. So if we draw then here an example of a circuit diagram, this, we also said, looks a little bit different, because there we start at the 24 volts. Yeah? There we start at the bottom, uh, at the top, and at the bottom is zero. Here we're going up, and here we're going down. And I will simply make here a very simple, this should be MB1. There is an S1 switch. Yeah? This is controlling here our valve QM1. Yeah. Huh? Might look like this. Yeah. This is path number one. Yeah. If I press this button, this will be activated and will switch. Yeah. Then I will make a second button. <laughs> it will go to MB2. Yeah. Disconnect the A1 and A2, they are usually called. Uh, and here we have, this is also working on QM1, uh, and here we have a second button S2. Uh, this is line number two, path number two. 
can look like this, for instance. Yeah? So we have two parts, chromatic scheme, electric scheme. Yeah? Might be in one diagram, one, one sheet, or might be in separate sheets. The bonding elements yeah, are the names. You see, there is QM1, I find QM1 here and here, and there's MB1 and so on. I can map these things, yeah, and then I realize what is happening. Okay? So, electromagnetic control scheme, two parts. This is a rather simple one. I show you a more complex one on the computer. Okay, let's switch to the computer. Okay, so here at the computer I have a little bit more complex uh, schematic. Yeah. Well, let's have first a look at the pneumatic part. The pneumatic part is again rather simple. We have two cylinders these times and two control valves. Yeah. So we have here this MM1, we have here the cylinder MM2, and both cylinders do have uh, limit switches. BG3 and BG4 here on MM2. They look like they are positioned somewhere outwards, yeah. So they might be some roller lever switches or something like this. And here at MM1, we have the switches directly drawn at the cylinder. And also the piston has this strange black line in there. This usually means, aha, uh -huh, these are approximate switches which do detect the piston on presence or not. Yeah? So we are not, we do not have to go somewhere out in the working area where it might be difficult to mount uh, limit switches somewhere. Yeah? We directly detect inside the cylinder what is actually nice because there I'm already there with wiring or something like this. Yeah? So I don't need to mess inside the, inside the working area. If this is easier for you, use it. Okay? Just a side information for this. Uh, so that the pneumatic part is rather small. Uh, like I said, it might be big uh, because of security, safety reasons. Uh, and yeah, but from functional point of view, it's usually pretty small. Uh, and down here we have the electrical parts. And here we can see, aha, uh -huh, it is really the case that these are limit switches, approximate switches, because they have a power supply and a signal output. This is controlling then immediately a relay and, poop, 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 and something is happening. And here we have a switch, uh, we are switching these uh, two coils. Uh, so here we have QM1, QM1, MB1, okay, MB2 and QM2 passed. Uh, so, here is, we seem to switch the, and here this is the logic, uh, separated logic and power control and so on. Uh, uh, looking, uh, you know, it does not look like a beginner's logic, and that's true. Yeah. We will, in the end, we will try to analyze what is happening here. However, right now, yeah, it is a little bit too complicated for us, I would say. So in next video, we're starting small. Yeah, we're just starting with one cylinder. We want to control this one cylinder. We were talking about direct and indirect control and so on. Yeah. So next video will then be first step into this world. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.